Morning all. How are we all doing? <clears throat> Class Morning Channel. Right, welcome everyone. And today, I'm going to be using this to spray that to show you how it shines up real good. And uh, hopefully, we will get a decent shine on it. No, you're right. I'm talking bollocks. We don't spray chrome on a bloody cloth. What we are going to do though, is we're going to do this wing. <clears throat> so, what it is, is this is the Poseidon. So I've already got some, I was just about to say shit in the gun, but <laughs> paint, I don't know why. There we go, got some paint in the gun. So what we're going to do is we're going to spray this and we're going to spray it chrome silver. There you go, you see, nice and lightly does it. I don't know why that always happens. Get a good coat on there. I'm going to turn it over. Put all this down. God, it's a big old unit, so... There's a reason. It comes out of shot, so... Down in there. And then... Along the front here. Hopefully, it should be it. Both sides done. And the only thing left to do now is the front of the wing. So, we should have a little covered. Yep, that's it. It's covered. Right, superb. <coughs> now, Pretty much done now, this is. So we'll let that dry there for a minute. I've done it on the other wing. So this was done a few days ago now. And as you can see, there's no silver coming off of it anymore. It's all been buffed out. Special one, then I've done it on the uh, tower planes and on the tower, which you can see it shining away there. So when you do do leading edge strips in aluminium or uh, any of these type of polishing ones these are these are the best ones to do them because then what happens then is you get um you get your flat but then you can shine up the leading edge so like we've done with the tail section i've basically all i've done is just buff the top the, the first part just where the airflow hits and splits around it it's the same with these and uh, the same with this one here. So this this one here, now I've sprayed it. That has to <clears throat> basically it'll be dry in a minute, but it's it won't be very good. But there's a lot of stuff on it, so without taking the tape off, you can you buff the thing with the tape on. Um, I took the tape off on this bit after I'd buffed it, and there was a little bit of flat there. So I just wiped that off and it turned the grey a bit. So it's like, it puts like a like a dirty mark on there. But it's no problem because do you know what? Uh, these things do do have airflow marks and wisps of crap going everywhere. And I spent many a year working with not these but airliners. Airliners was my main thing. Um, I used to work at Heathrow. Um, then Gatwick last of all and uh, yeah used to chuck the fuel on them so they weren't all spotlessly clean but when you get them at high altitude it's not fire jets you get a fire jet at high altitude I'll tell you I'll tell you a good one it's a phantom because by Christ the carbon deposits that come out of them engines and, they're, and the filth that's underneath when you get really high altitude they look spotlessly clean and uh, yeah they quite worked that one out I'll tell you Mm -mm. Cheers. Now, I'll put this one aside for a minute. And um, I'll just get something else. Because I did this this morning. <coughs> I 
Now, I don't do many of these things because they're always highly glossed, but <clears throat> this is uh, Airbus's new A350. So basically what I've done is I've sprayed it white on the fuselage. And it looks like it could do with a bit of a bit of a dust down. It's got some crap all over it. The wings aren't painted yet. Um, but basically, there's like a nice blue underside. So, what is this airline? No, we definitely need that one. Oh, here it is. Here. Air Caribbean. So it's a, it's a nice two-tone blue with a white fuselage. And I think it flies from France to the Caribbeans. So what we've got to do here, just got to mask the tip, the wing tip sails. Just put a bit of master tail over there. And then these go grey and just mask the engines up so you've got a nice bit around there. Just got to put a tiny bit of filler in that crack. Oh, I don't know why it is. I always get a crack on one of these pylons. So this one is there. And on that Poseidon, it's there. And it just keeps reappearing. No matter what bloody... I haven't put super glue in them yet, but <clears throat> I was bloody thinking of it. But, um, yeah, these, these airliner models, I mean, they do, um, you know... I mean, like, things like this, this is tape. So, how I'll get rid of that is I'll just give it a quick sand like that to get rid of the tape, even though that bit's not coming off. I don't know why. You can use white spirit. And then you can... You can also buff it up with a like what you do with your canopies and then as you can see it goes back to being nice and shiny again but uh, i've got literally got to i might have to respray that white just along here because i've noticed just here where it's been drying over the couple of days it's it's gone a bit bit gray there i don't, I don't know why i'm not sprayed any gray on it but it's always the way airliners are a real pig's ear I like them, but I hate them at the same time. It's that love-hate thing with them where if you can get them to look nice, then, yeah, they do look nice. But um, they can be a real pain in the arse. And, uh, it's, it's not so bad when the wings are all... If the whole thing is entirely gloss white, then you spray the whole thing gloss white and then it'd be easier to, but these wings are bowing grey. And I thought to myself, oh, jeez, that means I've got to spray all this, then mask all this up, and then spray these. But it's, it's, just, the, it's just the amount of masking, which really does your head in. And like I say, with all this up here, it's where I've had masking tape, and it's just, you think, Jesus, man, is there any end to it? And then the windscreen, I've I've put um, iridescent tape on, on the inside. Um, but there's a transfer to go over that. It's like a black and silver, <coughs> silver transfer to go over that. It is see through, so you, you can see through that if you hold it up to the sun. But you just don't get any detail on the interior. Uh, yeah, like I say, there's the underside. So it's uh, it's quite nice. It's a nice looking aircraft. It's a nice looking scheme as well. So there we go. So that's that's that. And then there was a there was a run on here somewhere. It seems to have gone now. It says him putting his fingers all over it. I can hear me dad now. Although he's, although he's not hearing me out, I suppose I can hear him. Where you putting your fingers and thumbs over it? You put a fingerprint in it. <laughs> <coughs> anyway. So that's the uh, the three fifty that I've got. But um, coming back to this one now. So, uh, hello, Spitfire. I don't see many of them here. There's been the odd one flown over since I've lived here. I've only been here three months. But uh, you don't get many, not many at all. I'm going to put this cable up here, otherwise I'm going to catch the poxy thing and... Right. So what we do is we get a soft cloth and basically just 
dust along it like that. This will take most of the powder off. As you can see, the cough goes a bit grey. Rolled her over. The other side's always the worst side. You've got pylons and stuff that take the rockets, but mainly just dust the front of them. That one in there's a pain in the ass, isn't it? As a matter of fact, isn't it? put this here, put this here. Put that here. Let me see if I can get in here by doing this. Hmm. Yeah, I ain't got long before I've got to go to the pigging job centre. Oh, God, I hate going to that place. It's just full of doom and gloom. And I'll tell you what, the other thing is, is uh, they offer to help you, but they don't help you. <laughs> I think, why offer to help people, you know? And, and then they're saying to me, you know, well, if you don't accept our help, then... I said, well, I've never not refused it. I've always accepted your help, but nothing's ever come of it. It's always fallen on deaf ears. Right, anyway, there's no point talking about that. Although I have got some good news. And the good news is, is we got word last night. I don't know, um, I don't know if I've ever breached this on here before because you don't really air your dirty washing on some social media. Basically, it's not dirty washing. We, we live in this, this nice old house, old Victorian house. And we're only here for a little bit. <clears throat> But the thing is, is for over the years, because it's just used as a temporary standby home, um, it gets neglected. So what happens there is, is the place just falls behind with all the updates and everything else. And basically, there's no there's no um, insulation in here. So I'm actually sitting here now, although I am in a t-shirt, as you can see, um, it is cold but it's not as cold as it has been because when we had the, the snow, um, it was, um, what was it, minus six outside and it was minus 10 in here. And we had that for three, four days where it was like, and then when the um, surveyor came round to take a look at the place to see what he could do, um, you could actually see your breath in here. And that was only last week, so... You know, he, he's only just been and gone. <clears throat> and he was a smashing bloke. And um, he told us exactly what he's going to do. And the good news is, is they're actually going to do it. <laughs> I can't believe me luck. They're actually going to do it. So, so hopefully within the next two weeks, we'll have all the roof insulated, which means I can bring all of my model kit stash here and get it out of that horrible bloody garage that's leaking um, and then then everything will be safe again so um, yeah I'm quite looking forward to that and uh, it's um, it's amazing what happens when you speak to the right people and all I'm going to say is Adrian you know who you are uh, he follows me. I'm pretty sure he follows me on YouTube, but if he doesn't, I'll tell him when I see him at club night. But mm -mm -mm. thank you very much, mate. Uh, much obliged. So, anyway, so we buff this off, right? So now we can unship this goddamn awful tape. I hate, I hate sticking tape on. Aircraft. I mean, this is proper masking tape for like painting and decorating houses. And although it's all right, <clears throat> you know, it's not, um, but it's cheaper. It's cheaper than that bloody, I mean, the, the best stuff is this here. This is the best stuff. So you get it from Wilco. This is actually Tamiya tape on bigger rolls. But um, although I don't live near a Wilco, but I'm going there today where there is a Wilco's. Um, my mate said that apparently they don't sell this anymore. Well, 
I've looked around online and you can get this and what this guy does is he gives you loads of different size rolls and what happens is when they come to you I think there's about six six different size rolls they come in a packet like that so we're going to two four five so there's one missing so it's probably that one but um yeah so you get seven six different uh rolls but if <coughs> But they're all that's that's off of Evil Bay, or as I call it. But um yeah, they're they're still a lot cheaper than the Tamiya stuff and it's the same bloody stuff and that's what annoys me, you know, because the thing is like everything, you go out and you buy, you know, uh a Ford Escort, for instance, and you'll pay uh, you know say ten grand for it. But you go out and buy a Ford R S Turbo Escort and it, it it goes much dearer, especially on the parts. And I found that out years ago when I actually owned one. And um, I went down to a garage in Twickenham. And it was a garage where you could go down on a Sunday and get all your bits for where your cars, whatever. And I needed a thermostat, I think it was. And um, anyway, I went down there and I said to the bloke, I said, um, I, said I need a thermostat for... Um, an Escort RS Turbo. So he asked me the reg and all that. And then he came back and he said, um, right, he said, do you know that this is the same thermostat as they put in a normal 1600 Escort? And I said, no, because I didn't really know much about cars. And I was just starting to learn about engines and stuff. And he said, well, I'm, I'm going to save you money. And I said, why is that then? And he said, well, because at the end of the day, he goes, you're going to be paying something like 28 quid for a, a, a thermostat that's exactly the same, in the same box, in the same number, but just because it hasn't got RS Turbo written on the thing, you're going to pay more, a lot less, rather. So I paid for just a normal 16. He said, whenever you come down here, he goes, if it's anything to do with the engine, unless it's something Pacific, then specific, not Pacific, specific, then just ask the guy on the desk if you can, if it's a, a 1600. He said, because uh, he goes, you'll pay a lot less for it. And, um, you know, saving your money. Well, <clears throat> that's what I did over the years. And ever since then, I've tried my best to get away with it every time. It doesn't always work, because uh, I must admit, I, well, another lesson I learned as well is don't ever take your, your car or your motor, unless you have to, to a main dealer, because um, I took a Lexus to a main dealer once, and um, 1700 or well, nearly £1,800 later, just for a bloody service, I thought, cross the money, I'm coming cost that much because I had I had a full service done <coughs> and um, the reason it was that much is because they provided I don't know about now this was going back some years this was about 12 years ago um, but they provided you with a with a with a car so you was not without a car then they valeted your car so that you got it back all nice neat and tidy and washed and clean so he was paying for all that. So he was paying for the hire of the car, your car valet, your service, the labour, and a fucking bit on top. Bloody joke. Anyway, that's not model aeroplanes. But that was me talking crap while I pulled all the crappy table off. <coughs> so now you can see, <coughs> I've got this nice clean looking thing now. And... All we do is we just rub over it to buff up the leading edge. You're not going to get much on the inside bit, but the outside bit you might. And and there you go. Oh God, look, look, look bloody light in the way. Oh, it's a so trouble. 172 is going on small. <laughs> All bits of seven eight hundred. So there you go. I've got a nice shiny, shiny, shiny leading edge, and then the double looking top bit so I'm happy with that so that now 
everything on that now, barring the two strobe lights that go on the ends of the wings, it's paint finished. Um, and I've got the decals now, so I think what I might have to do is I might have to get the decals. Um, I can either do one side or some, or just bung a few on and see how it fares. But um, I must admit, for a, a kit as large as it is, and the only reason it's got these on is because when it sits on the table, it hits them points. And uh, yeah, don't scratch the paintwork. But uh, no, I'm, uh, I'm quite impressed with that. I must admit, I've got to do a little bit of tidying up here uh, because the silver's gone over the line where the tape's curved. So, yeah. But other than that, we're looking good. So, oh, decal time. Um, I've also got two of the harpoons <coughs> sprayed up in their basic grey, but they've got to be done again because they just, I don't know, there's like bits of dark grey showing through here and there where the paint was scratched off a bit. So they got to be done again, but they, they sit under there. So that's those. And um, yeah, and the only other real pig's ear in this kit is where I did the cockpit. Um, you could probably see on that window. As a matter of fact, where's my pointer? I'm gonna use this because this is a real fine pointer, right? But where you can see on this window, there's a speck of shit and it's on the inside. I don't know how. I don't know how the heck, and there's a few more there. Um, and where are we go? There's a few more there as well on that window, and another one there, and there is one there as well. What the heck went on inside there? I don't know. I really don't know. It's um, it's peed me off a bit because these windows here are just painted black, and I'm wondering whether I should have done it with these. But because there were such large windows, and you could see into the cockpit. I thought, right, I won't, I won't bother doing that because you can see the dash. But this, the, the, some of the reason stack has made those bits of crap fly up on the window, and I, and I don't know why. I don't really want to go, you know, um, cutting this ear to make a hole to hoover it out because <coughs> it's because um, that's what I already did. I, I cut that off there. I hoovered the whole lot out. But I didn't cut the entire lot off. I just cut this bit at the back, and because it was, it needed re resetting. So I got the cut down there, cut down there, and the cut across there. This was all still glued, and then I reset it back in its correct position. And before I did it, I sucked everything out of there. Um, I just, just realised that's broken as well. Like that. that's happened. Oh, there's more new bits that need to be fixed. But yeah, nah, it's a bit of a, a bit of a shame, really. I mean, I could cut the nose off and then hoover again, sucking the, the, the lot out. But it, I think the hoover might create static. I, th I think what, what might be the best thing to do is, is if um, push come to shove, I'll... Um, I'll just maybe mask this all up and then just spray the windows black like the nose, like the other windows. Because there is nobody in there, is there, after all? I've got no pilots in there. And then I've just got to stick the tops of these areas on. But I thought I'll leave them off for now because they, they're they um, they're like a sort of... They've got an arrowhead here. They go back and then they've got a V at the back. And they're very... I mean, these are bad enough that they catch your fingers and your clothing. But the um, the actual tops will um, oh they'll catch everything everything and anything they'll catch. So uh, I see what I mean. Look that that bloody crack. Look, there's a bloody crack. It just doesn't go away. 
Yeah, the wing, perfect fix, but that crack. I don't know, I don't know what to do. I suppose I could shove some super glue on it and then just sand it in. But um, yeah, it's a real pain in the butt. Um, and then finally we've got all the, the aerials that go along the top and a gathering of aerials at the back underneath. So I've got all them to do. But that'll be the last thing. So as of from now, that's it. She's where she is. So the next one on her will be um, the deckling. We'll do some deckling on it. But that just showed you how I do the leading edges. So I've already done them because otherwise it just takes forever to do. But that wing we've done this morning. Um, I've just got to stick that thing back in there again. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, thanks for looking in. Like, subscribe, enjoy. Um, over a thousand now. I think I've got thousand, thousand and forty-three. I think it is, or something. So they're gradually, they're gradually going up. Um, I've been told, because I don't know what happens at a thousand, but I've been told now that I can actually do a live show. So, <clears throat> um, yeah. Although this is kind of live, but you're just watching. But I suppose yeah, I can uh, um, take questions from you and stuff. So maybe I'll do a Q and A um, if that's the case. Um, I'm not too sure. I think uh, I think before you can earn any pocket money from it, you have to have a certain amount of um, viewing hours, um, which at the moment I'm not far off of it, but I'm not there. I think I still need about another 1,100 hours of viewing. So, yeah. And then I can do more stuff then. Um, yeah, which would be good. So I say, um, I'm limited to my funding at the moment. Um, everything has to go on the children. Um, so I don't get much in the way of pocket money to uh, to put into this. So all I'm doing now is everything everything I've got, I do. Um, so that's that. Anyway, I'm going to end this on a, 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 a special note because um, yesterday um, I went to my uh, friend's father's funeral and um, I must admit, he was... Um, he was a great bloke, and like like anybody, you know, he he took me because I used to go fishing with the the chap, and um, yeah, he was um, in a funny sort of a way. We were kind of two alike, but we enjoyed the fishing, and you know, and enjoyed each other's company as well. But um, when I saw my mate yesterday, I haven't seen him in a, oh God, out of a long time. And um, him and his wife, um, I, th I can't remember if it was him who told me or whether it was her that told me, but it's been 17 years that they've been married. So congratulations on that one, you two. And you know you are, Mr. Mark and Miss, Mrs. Fett. So um, yeah, good on you. Um, like I say, it's, it's, a, it's a sad thing when you lose uh, family members. But, um, you know, life goes on, it is, it is hard, but um, it does get easier, it does get easier. So I'd just like to say, you know, thanks for the invitation, Mark and Svet. Um, send my love to your mum and everybody. Um, so I'm saying hello to you, the hand as <laughs> on uh, my channel. Um, it, was, um, it was really nice to have a nice catch up with the pair of you and your mum, sister, brother, and a couple of other friends um, that were there as well. But um, yeah, I'll have to um, I'll have to somehow send you my number. I I think I'll I'll what they call it a PM yeah a private messenger. Um, I'll send you my telephone number because I must admit I had to rush off yesterday to um, pick up my van, and um, I found out that when I got to the garage yesterday to pick the van up. 
my clock on my motorbike said five past six and I thought I better go there anyway they shut half five because I didn't know what time it was and um, I then found out that the motorbike clock was in summer mode so it was an hour fast so I got there an hour and ten minutes earlier and yet I was whacking it up the motorway at 100 mile an hour on this motorbike freezing cold and uh, yeah managed to get there with just just within the hour um, which was uh, <coughs> all good stuff but anyway <coughs> I'm going to hope to catch up with you and Svet at some point um, when I come down and see my mum and dad and I will uh, give you a tingle but I'll send you my number mate um, thanks for following me on YouTube by the way uh, Svet and Mark I think I don't know whether you both do but I know Svet um, subscribed yesterday so thanks very much Keep on looking in and I'll keep making things like this and that Spitfire and that airliner and whatever else. I'll tell you what, I might actually go for a tank next. You know, um, what do you say, a nice Merc of a 4 with a trophy system. Beautiful tank, my favourite, my favourite. But anyway, for now, we've done, that. We've done the leading edge of the wing and um, we'll see you in the next one.